Good morning guys. Today in this one, um, we're just going to create a quick door tutorial, a door that will open up when you walk in front of it. And in the next tutorial, we'll do a part two and we'll create a locking system where you need to collect a key in order to open that door. So this is just an empty map apart from this fire, um, which we made in the last tutorial. Just click file, new level and hit default and you'll get to this map. Um, and all I've done is just change the scale of the floor to five instead of one. So normally you'd spawn in a map like this, just change that to 5 so you've got some more space. So now what we're going to do is down in your content browser, right click, click create new folder and we're going to call this key and door. Um, right click in there, create a new blueprint class, click on type actor and call this door BP. Open that up, go to your components, add um, static mesh and call this door 1. Now go down into your static mesh over here and type in door and you should get a SM door like that which is um, part of the starter content so make sure you've got the starter content enabled. Um, if we click on, make sure your snapping's turned on, drag that across, um, see if we can line it up right on the center like that. So I'm not sure what um, units this uses. Okay, if you turn that to 10 you should be able to line that up right in the center like that. Okay, and then what we're going to do is duplicate that with Control w call this one door 2, drag this across like that, and then if you unlock the scale and um, turn the Y to negative, um, and then drag it across again, now you've got two doors together like this. Um, we could also add a frame, so if you go up here again, type in static mesh, and call this one frame, um, and what we might, oh yeah, so we'll do this, we'll just type in um, frame down here, SM door frame, just like that. Now you might need to change the scale of the Y to maybe 2. Yeah, that looks pretty good to me. Um, so now we've got a frame around the doors. It's a bit stretched on the edges, but it looks fine. Um, lock that again, and now attach your doors to the door frame, just like that. Okay, so now let's introduce um, some moving for these doors. Now if you'll notice on both of these doors, the pivot point is in the corner like that. So if you were to rotate this, um, you'd get a door opening sort of mechanic. So let's see which way, if we want it to open inwards or outwards. Um, I suppose if you look down in your axes here, uh, X is the side that we're on. So let's say you're walking into the door, you want the doors, you want to push the doors open. So we need to rotate door one to negative 90 and door 2 to positive 90, okay? Just like that. Um, so just remember those values and we'll come back to those in a second. So go into your event graph, delete all of this, um, right click, add a custom event, and call this open doors. Drag off of that and add a new timeline. Oops, new timeline and just call this 0 to 1. If you've been watching my videos, you'll see me do this a thousand times. Change the length to 1, add a float track, call your float track 0 to 1, add a key, right click and add a key. Um, first key is 0 and 0, second key is 1 and 1. So now you've got a nice um, straight linear line like that. Um, that's all good, that's done. So now what you're going to do is we're going to drag in both doors like this and you're going to say set relative rotation for both but you want a separate node oops you want a separate node for each okay so put one behind the other just like that and on update hook them up and then what we want to do is on begin play, we're going to get both of our doors again. Um, hold control drag to drop them in like that and say get relative rotation. And then you're going to promote both of these to a variable. So you're going to call this door one origin like that. and then do the same thing for door 2. So get relative rotation 
five minutes. Doing all right. And call this one door to origin, like that. And the reason that we want to save those origins is we're going to use those as a point of reference when we're um, setting their new rotations. So off of the new rotation, type in lerp rotator. Oops. Copy that, add another one over here. And what we're going to do with these is you're going to grab your origin for door 2 and hook that up into the set relative location for door 2 into the A. And then you're going to grab the um, origin for 1 and put that into 1. And then what we're going to do is for door 1, the rotation that we wanted was negative 90. Okay, So remember that, negative 90 for door 1 on the Z. So negative 90 in there like that. And then the other one was positive 90. So type in 90 there. And then just set these back to default like that. So now um, grab the little 0 to 1 pin out there and hook that up to the alpha of both of these. Over there like that. You can reroute these and make them a bit neater if you like, just like that. Um, compile and save. So what this is doing is this um, alpha value, if that's a value of 0, that'll return A. If it's a value of 1, it'll return B. And if it's a value between 0 and 1, it'll return a linear interpolation. That's what LERP stands for, between A and B. So as this cycles from 0 to 1, what these set relative locations are going to do is set the rotation of this door to a smooth value between A and B until it gets to B. Now just make sure that you've got shortest path ticked or the door might um, go the other way and like clip through the frame. Um, and that should be all we need. We just need an event for um, opening the doors. So what we could do is go add component, add a collision, sphere collision, and just call this overlap. And then we'll just change that to something like this. And whenever the player overlaps that trigger, um, the door will open. So just save that, go into your event graph, right click, say begin component overlap, add on component begin overlap. Um, the other character, drag off and type in equal object, and then offer the other pin, say get player character. And then drag that up to a branch like that. So we're going to check if the overlapped actor, other actor, um, is the player character. And if it is the player character, then what we're going to do is we're going to open the doors. Simple as that. So that, that'll call this event, that'll trigger this timeline, and that'll open up. Okay. Let's um, have a look and see if this works. So jump in. Beautiful. Easy. Now, if we walk into that volume again, nothing happens. Dope. I guess because that timeline is already done. Cool. So that's that tutorial. Um, that's pretty much done. If you wanted to make it a bit smoother, you could click on this, um, open up your timeline, click on the keyframe down here, and just change the interpolation. So I just clicked on auto. Now that'll be a um, bit smoother like that instead of it looking so like robotic and str strange. Um, this is the forward vector of the door. So maybe what we could do is we could add in a arrow. So add in an arrow component um, and just change the scale of that to like three or something so it's a bit bigger and easier to see and drag that up into the center. So now uh, three is probably a bit too big. So this will indicate to you which way the doors are going to open. So if we come in from this side Sorry, this isn't the way that the doors are going to open. This is the way that the player should come in. And then the doors open the other way. It's the forward vector of the doors. So that's looking a lot smoother. Um, if you wanted to change how much they opened, you can change that as well. So you could go um, negative 135 for you and 135 for you. So that'll open them up a bit wider. It looks a bit odd when they're on the... Um, right on the 90. That looks a bit more... Nice. Looks a bit nicer. Cool. Anyway, that's it for that.
Um, in the next one, we'll add in a key mechanism. So um, the door will be locked. And if you walk in front of it while it's locked, it'll give you a little pop-up message saying that it's locked. Um, you go and pick up a key. You'll get a little key widget on your HUD. And then if you go back and open the door, it'll take your key and it'll open the door. Um, and we can also hook it up so that it gives you a nice message and a sound when you unlock the door as well. Um, that's it, guys. We're going to leave that one there. I'll see you in the next one.